Good morning, babies, and welcome to Sexy. The Lord is our strength. Well, this morning, I want to ask you good people a question. Are you prepared for the things that you're asking God for? Because so many people want so many things. Like a lot of people are asking for relationships, seeking them everywhere. But are you prepared for a relationship? Are you really prepared to put the work in that is needed to have a good, loving, godly relationship? Ask yourself, you're praying for a new home. Are you prepared to get that new home and do what you need to do for that new home? Do you understand the process? Have you researched the process? Some of you want to go back to school. Are you ready to do the work and put in the time that it takes to get through school to finish that process? Some of you want to work on self. Are you willing to be committed to it? You know, commitment Commitment, a commitment to anything is work. And a lot of people that I look at today don't want to do the work. You know, we talk about young folk all the time, but a lot of young folk don't want to do the work. They don't want to work at jobs. They want everything quick and fast. You know, even some of our older generations want everything fast, quick, and in a hurry. But things take work. Things take time. Like I always say, good relationships don't happen. It takes work. You may be looking at somebody else's relationship and you may be admiring their relationship, but it takes work to get that good relationship. When you wake up in the morning and you want to be cranky and evil, but you got somebody else laying there next to you, will, will it be feasible to be evil and nasty and not want to speak in the morning? You may not want to communicate in the morning when you wake up, but is that the best way to be? You got to work on that. You got to determine that I'm not going to be like this. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to say good morning. Some people don't even want to say good morning in the morning, but they want to be in a relationship. You know, things take work. Nothing comes easy. It takes work. And most people don't want to do the work. Right now, we're in some serious warfare. And it's going to take warfare in the spirit which is work to break down these enemies that is rising up against the people of God. But a lot of people of God are just like the world. They want everything to get back where they used to be. Some of them things that used to be need to come down. God is trying to take us into another rim. He's trying to take us to another place. Even though the enemy is doing what he's doing, God is doing what he's doing. But do you recognize that? Have you laid before God and labored? It's work. Did you call on God when you woke up this morning? No, because it's work. You know, a lot of us just want to do, you know, just wake up and just vicariously and just numbly and just um, happenstancely do things that we normally do, which is really in our flesh. Wake up, get our cup of coffee. Do we even get out of the bed and say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. A lot of us do things on autopilot. And a lot of things that we do on autopilot is not of God. God is what, what we say in the body of Christ. That rhema word, where from the time you wake up, even when you're asleep, the spirit of the living God is dropping a rhema word in your spirit to what you should be doing today. Woo, Lord, I feel that thing, baby. God is giving you a rhema word every day from the time you wake up, even when you're asleep, and what to do. And how to execute things out in your life every day. But are you ready for that rhema word? Or are you on autopilot? Because God is telling you what to do every minute, every hour. But a lot of times we make it our own decisions based on our autopilot life. God didn't tell you to go see XYZ. God didn't tell you to go do this. God told you he wants you to be in your word. God told you he wants you to pray. God told you he wants you to go pray for such and such a person. God told you he wants you to go to witness to such and such a person. But because you're on autopilot in your flesh, you do what your flesh want to do. Because you've been feeding your flesh more than you've been feeding your spirit. So that's why you're on autopilot in your flesh and not autopilot in the spirit. See, babies, as we begin to seek God and get in that spiritual rim more, We'll be on autopilot for God. 
So we wake up in the morning, even in the midnight hour. We'll be dreaming of the things of the most high. We'll be thinking about God all throughout the day. We'll be questioning the things that we do. Is this of God? And as I said, you'll be on autopilot in your spirit. It'll become second nature to you that this is what God had me do. You'll hear his voice more clearly. A lot of people are like, how I know I'm hearing God's voice? Number one, if it's telling you to sin, you know that ain't God's voice. If it's telling you to do things outside of the bounds of God, you know that is not God's voice. A lot of you don't know God's voice because you don't even know his word. So you can't even decipher between good and evil. But you're on autopilot for evil. Because you know that. You've been born and bred in it. What does it say? You've been born and shaped in iniquity. Born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So we've been born in it. It's second nature. But we want God and his ways to be second nature to us. We don't want to be on autopilot in our flesh. We want to be on autopilot to the spirit of the living God. Babies, I love you and so does God. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Become, become what God has designed you to become. And by doing that, you will begin to seek him, hunger and thirst after him, which will begin to shape and design your life according to his will and his purpose. You'll begin to be on all a part of for God and not on all a part of for your flesh. Babies, I love you and so does God. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Be uplifted. I pray that God shines his face upon you today. I pray that God shines upon you with his love, his grace, and his mercy. And remember that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of peace, love, and a sound mind. Love your sugar, wooga, smooches, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.